Mazat Hashem will be giving a special class on Haggadah Shul Pesach. Now, I want to explain that this class will be different from other classes that we usually give when we give a deeper explanation. This class will be a very basic class going through the Haggadah from the beginning, from Kehal Ahmaraniya all the way until the end when we say the Beracha of the, at the end of the Haggadah with the, drinking the cup of wine. And the purpose of this class is to have a basic and clear understanding of the Haggadah. And once we have that clear, the text, the words, the meanings clear, then we're able to go and look in the commentaries and the Hachamim tell us, and as we could see from any bookstore, or we could see from a beautiful uh, website called HebrewBooks.org, the Haggadot on Pesach, the commentaries on the Haggadah of Pesach are endless. I have a city in my house of 5,000 Haggadot. The commentaries are endless, and each one is another story by itself. So, we're not going to spend that all our time explaining elaboration on the Haggadah, because there's obviously many ways to do it. We're giving the basic text and how the Haggadah works, the style of the Haggadah, the meaning of the words of the Haggadah, and we hope that this way, the story is presented very, very clearly as we read the Haggadah ourselves on the night of Pesach. And then it's up to each person. Kol HaMosif, Yosifin Lo, whoever wants to add on to the, Haggadah, to the commentaries of the Haggadah, to the meaning, to the words of the Haggadah, there will be Mosif Lo Min HaShamayim. And we'll begin with the, first of all, with the source of the Haggadah Shal Pesach. Torah says in Parashat Bo, which we read every single day, with those, for those who put on tefillin every single day and say Kaddishli, we say, "Vegata lebencha bayom hahu lemor ba'abur zei asa adon elim in besetim mesayim." You shall tell your children on that day. Okay, what does that mean? You shall tell your children on that day. Here, the Torah tells us that we have an obligation to relate over the story of mitz- coming out of mitzrayim to our children. When belayla hazei. Okay, but we have to tell your children on this night as we will see soon as the Haggadah itself will bring the source of the Pasuk. This is where it comes from. This is the source Minhat Torah. Now, on a basic, on a simple level, when one relates the story of coming out of Messiah on the night of Pesach, he's fulfilling Mizah Minhat Torah. However, it goes much deeper than that. Some Haggadot have in the beginning of Magid, it's brings the Zohar which speaks about the holiness of this night and the greatness of the story of Mitzrayim of relating the story of coming out of Mitzrayim and as Zohar says the HaKadosh Baruch Hu comes and grabs all the heavenly angels and he tells him come with me I want you to come down and attend this person's Lel Seder and see how he gives praise to me how he speaks about the exodus of Mitzrayim And Hashem Himself comes and listens. It's a very, very special night. It's a very holy night. And this mitzvah is the highlight of the night. Besides the fact that all the children, what they learn in school, they come home and they're excited to go through the Haggadah. And the excitement is in the air because it's also the adults as well. And that's, even though we heard it as the Haggadah itself says, there's still an excitement of coming and listening again and again. Now, again, how to get a person, the family into it and all the other different things that's discussed in a different video. The elaboration of the Haggadah in a much deeper level, that's also perhaps another video we hope to do. But for right now, we will give the basic understanding of the Haggadah, which we hope will be, we hope will be helpful for veterans as well as beginners. I believe everybody will get a benefit from this Haggadah. Let's begin with the first statement of the Haggadah. I'll be using the text that's found in the Haggadah of Pesach of Shalom Yerushalayim. And it's pretty much the same text as most people have. We'll begin with the words, Keha Lahma Anya. We begin by saying that th- we have the bread of, in front of us, we have the matzah in front of us. And we say, Keha Lahma Anya. Like this poor bread, 
دي ها كي ها لحمة عنيك دي أخالو أبهاتانا بأعاد مسائم Like this bird, exactly like this bird that you see over here, the Matzah Our forefathers ate in the land of Matzahim And we say كل دخفين يتي فيخول Whoever is hungry, let him come and eat كل دتسريخ يتي فيفساح Anybody who needs, anybody who needs a place for the Seder Let him come and eat with us Pesach This is referring to not the Seder But to the Korban Pesach There's a Mitzvah Minat Torah When we have a Beit HaMikdash to bring a Korban On the 14th of Nisan In which the meat of that Korban to be in that night This is called Korban Pesach That we don't have a Beit HaMikdash today We still do Zechel the Korban Pesach which is the afikoman, the matzah that we eat. So when we're saying of here, those who need a place, let them come and attend the Pesach with us. And we end off with a prayer, Hashataha This year we are here, the next year we should be in the land of Israel. Hashataha this year we are here as slaves. The next year we should be in the land of Israel as free people. Free, we're in America, we're also free. And those who are living in Eretz Israel today, in the year Tavshin Ayin Gimel, according to the non-Jewish calendar 2013, they're saying also, ibn Hurin. You're living in Israel, you're free, you can do whatever you want. So what does it mean? that for the next year we're going to be free people in Eretz Israel. And the answer is, Hazal tell us, Hakimim tell us, as Pesach and itself is the preparation for Shabuot, which is Matan Torah. In Lecha ben Hurin, you have no free man except for that. For he who's or sick who's involved in Torah. And so long as we don't have that freedom, we don't have the ability to be able to sit and learn and to uh, throw ourselves within the Torah of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we're still not 100% free. We still don't have the freedom to do what our Nishamot really want to do. And that comes only with the final redemption of the Jewish people, which where all the Jewish people will live together in Eretz Israel with the coming of Mashiach. So this is really what we're praying for. We're praying for the redemption of the Jewish people and that we, don't, we, should, we won't have the burden and the pressure of going out and running and working and things where the Melacha, our work, will be done for us and we'll be able to really be Bene Horin and to be able to keep the Torah fully and lovingly without the pressure of other things that are pulling us away from Torah. Now, of course, you noticed, and if you didn't notice, this first paragraph is written in Aramaic. And there are many people who question, why is this first paragraph written in Aramaic? And the answer is that this paragraph was written in Aramaic because, on a simple level, it was written in a time when the Jewish people did not speak the Hebrew language, or did not understand, the majority of the people did not understand the Hebrew language, and therefore it started with Aramaic. However, that's only on a simple level, on a deeper level it's understood, like the Zohar that we quoted earlier, is that since Hashem comes and He sits and He listens to us, the Gemara says that the angels do not understand the Aramaic language. And therefore, we're showing in the beginning when we speak in Aramaic that we don't need the angels to be the medium, to be the middle person, the middle people to carry out what we're saying are praises to God because God is here present within, within right here with us. He's here and listening to our praises, to our saying of the story and therefore right in the beginning we start with Aramaic, we don't need the angels to be the middle people. That's on a deeper level. And then we begin, we start getting to the story of Mitzrayim. Now the Gemara says, like we said, Vigata al Bincha is a Mizam al-Torah. And the Gemara explains it and the Ramam brings it halakha al-Ma'aseh is that the obligation of relaying the Torah, when it says, the, relaying the story of Pesach, because it says, doesn't mean only your children. Even if a person has no children, or his children are already adults, and he's already a grandfather, and his, you know, his children are much older, or if children are not with him, he, whoever is around him, he still has to relate the story of Yetziat Mitzrayim. And not only that, even if he's alone by himself, he has to relate the story of Yetziat Mitzrayim. And how does one fulfill this mitzvah? The Rabbim says, you do it with a question and answer. As we all know, when a question is asked, it makes it much more interesting. It's not a boring lecture, oh, we came out of Mitzrayim in, uh, you know, in the year 2448. And, right? He starts asking a question. Why? And who? And why are we doing different things? What's going on over here? 
Oh, you want to hear the answer? It's an extent. It's a give and take. You're involved in it. So this way, everybody's involved in the story of Yitzhak Mitzrayim. It's not just uh, a relating over facts and information. It becomes interactive and everybody gets involved. So this is why we begin now the story of Yitzhak Mitzrayim. We begin with questions. And these questions are supposed to be done by the children. Now once upon a time when the children didn't know much, we did a few things that are very, very strange to arouse the interest of the children. That they should say, hey, what's going on? Manishta now, why is everything different? Today that the children know already, sometimes even more than what the parents know, so uh, how much different can you make? So the change that we do is we, we have the cow out with all the food on it, we pick it up and we take it out away, so that the children say, hey, what's going on with the food? And they'll say, manish and all of a sudden they'll realize all the other things that they had on their mind and they start asking. Children, uh, you know, ask and they, they, they're very open. They don't keep things to themselves when they see something strange. Hey, why is this, what's going on? And once they ask, regardless of answering their question directly, we can now relate to them whatever they want to hear because they're open and they're ready to hear. So we do this change, take away the ka'ara, so the children should ask the next four questions. Now keep in mind, like we said before, Every part of this Haggadah has a lot of depth to it. Imagine 5,000 books on it. Obviously, it's very, very deep. So, although we're expanding on a simple level, this should not take away from a much deeper understanding. So, we will g- g- stick to what we uh, said we will do. We'll explain now the Haggadah, the next part, Manishtana, which is usually asked by the children or anybody who's present can ask these questions. We ask four questions. Why is this night differently from all other nights? All other nights, we don't find that we have an obligation to dip our food or our vegetables in any sauce. But tonight, we're dipping our vegetables twice. What are we doing? We take the kapas, we dip it in the salty water, and we take the maron, we dip it in the haroset. What's going on over here? Next, all other nights, we can eat whatever we like. We can eat something that's made with hamets, something that rises, pita, pizza, <laughs> lava. But this night, we're very careful that we only have things that kosher pesa. It's only matzah. What's going on? Third question, all other nights, we can eat any greens that we want. But tonight, we're eating specifically the lettuce, the remaining lettuce, which is the maror. And finally, the fourth question, All other nights we eat or drink, whether sitting down or reclining. If a person wants to go recline on the couch and wants to eat, it's fine. If a person wants to sit regularly, which is what we mostly do, it's also fine. But tonight, we have to eat specifically the, the matzot, or the cups of wine by reclining. These are the four questions. They might not be so strong today because we already know what the questions are and the children already know what the questions are. But like we said, there's a lot of depth to these questions. They represent many, many different things. And they begin the story or they begin the part of relating the story of Yetziat Masraim. And now we come with the answer. What is the answer? The answer is Abadim Hainu the Farabim Masraim. Without addressing these questions directly, you have to know, we tell the child, you have to know, first of all, the whole change, which is man shana, is because of one thing, and that is because once upon a time we were slaves to Pharaoh Mithraim. And Hashem took us out of there, Biyad Hazaka, Hashem took us out of Mithraim with a strong hand, with an outstretched arm. And if Hashem would not have taken us out of Mitzrayim, we would have still been us, our children, and our grandchildren. We would have still been enslaved to Parov Mitzrayim. And therefore, this is what we're doing. This is why the whole change. We have to relate the story. This is the what, what was. What, ha- what used to be what, what used to be with the Jewish people? They were slaves. I should take them out. Now you might say, okay, I know the story already. Comes the Haggadah and tells us that we tell the children and really for us as well. 
And even if we were all to be wise people, knowledgeable people, people who understand on our own, that we all know the Torah. We still have a commandment to speak in the story of Mitzrayim. Don't think that, okay, we know it already. We're not relating the story over because you don't know it. Which will explain a lot of these questions. Oh, we already know the questions. We're not saying it because we know it. We're doing it because that's our obligation tonight. To relate, to give over the story tonight specifically. Now you might think to say, okay, let me say the minimum and I'm done. I already know the story. No. Even if you know the story, the more you say of the story, the more you speak about the story of Mitzrayim, the more praiseworthy you are. And the next paragraph comes and proves with the story of this, st this statement, how true the statement is. We just said the more you speak about the Yetziat Mitzrayim, the more you're praiseworthy. And comes the Haggadah and tells us a story. Here's a story about a few rabbis that were very, very famous in the, their times and even in our times. These were Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Yeshua. These are Tanaim that are found in the Gemara in the Mishnayot left and right. Rabbi Azab and Azariah, Rabbi Akiba, Rabbi Tafon. Five of the greatest rabbis. Says the, Gemara, it says the Haggadah, there was a story with all these five rabbis. Shayu Mesubi ibn Brak, that they were reclining, they were eating in Ibn Brak. And you might say, Maybe these rabbis were talking, we can tell you a story now about them, how they spoke about coming out of Messiah. You might say maybe they were younger. So we know it was in the time they were in Bnei Brak. It was a time when there were already big rabbis and it was in the city of Torah. In the city of once upon a time, which was the center of Torah. And they were also speaking in the story of Yetziat Messiah the whole evening. So you see, they were hachamim and they were still relaying the story. They were Nebonim. They knew the whole Torah. They were great rabbis. What could Hadush could they add? These are the five greatest rabbis, and they were speaking the whole night. So I say, okay, they're doing it because they have to. It says the Haggadah, yeah, but you know, let me finish the story. To the point when the students came, they told them, The time has come to say Kriyat Shema already. What does that mean? That means they lost themselves. When a person is lost in a discussion, in a story, in an event, he loses track of time. They lost track of time, they didn't know what time it was. They were speaking the whole night about Yitzhak Pesayim. We all know the story. These are big rabbis. No, they were relating it lovingly without realizing they lost track of time. And according to some commentaries, I'm not going to say a lot of people, but some commentaries want to say that the Haggadah didn't say over here they were sitting down and Misaprim Bitsiab Mitzrayim on the night of Pesach. It says, Kolotu Halayla, the whole night. It wasn't Pesach, it was a regular night. They were just sitting there relaying the story. That's how someone explained, which makes it even more so that look, these rabbis, the love of the story of Mitzrayim, because we have an obligation to say it, they said it, they said it with a tremendous simha that they lost track of time. Next, now the Haggadah moves on and tells us uh, a little bit about the obligation in general about speaking about the story or relating the story of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, coming out of Mitzrayim. Amar bin Azab bin Azariah, this is a Mishnah, Masechet Berachot, and says the like this. Rabbi Azab bin Azariah said, Hare ani kebeshi Mishnah. I am like 70 years old, not exactly 70 years old, because Achimim explained that he was really appointed to become the Rosh Yeshiva at a very young age. 18 years old, and you know, it's very hard for people to take you seriously when you look very young. So therefore he said, he prayed, and it was miraculous that the next day already he looked like he was much older. He looked like he was 70 years old. And he says like this, I was not zoche to convince, I did not merit to convince my colleagues to explain to them that there's an obligation relating the story of Yitzhak Mitzrayim every evening. Because I didn't have a proof. I was trying to convince them that my opinion was that the story of Mitzrayim, there's a mitzvah that a person should say it even in the evenings. And I didn't have a good proof to them. He says, Rabbi Lazam Lazayant, Asher Dira Shah bin Zoma, until Ben Zoma came and he found a beautiful proof. What was his proof? Shane'imar, Leman tizkor et yom tzetecha me'ez Mitzrayim kol yemei hayeicha. In order that you should remember the day that you came out of Mitzrayim, all 
of the days of your life. You see right away, there's some extra words. You should remember the time they came out of Mitzrayim. Call all you made the days of your life. You could have said, the man that you should remember, Yom Tzedekham Mitzrayim Mitzrayim, Kol Hayecha, all your life, or Yemi Hayecha, the days of your life. Why did it say all the days of your life? So, explains Ben Zoma like this. The two terms explain two periods of time. Yemi Hayecha, the days of your life refers to days, Hayamim, daytime, which is sunrise to sunset. You have an obligation of relating the story of Mitzrayim in the daytime. Kol Yemi Hayecha, when the Torah comes and adds the word Kol, that's Hallelot. That's referring to, additionally, besides the Yeme, the simple meaning of Yeme, which means days, which is the daytime, it also refers to the evenings. That's how he explained it to prove, that. that's how Ben Zoma proved that there's an obligation of relaying the story of Mitzrayim, even in the evenings. However, the Hakamim say, they explain the Pasuk differently. Why the two terms? It comes to teach us of two periods of time when a person is obligated to say the story of Mitzrayim. Different from Ben Zoma. Yemei Hayecha. When it says Yemei Hayecha, the days of your life, that's all I'm saying. When you're alive in this world, that's when you have the obligation of saying the story of Mitzrayim. Call Yemei Hayecha. It's coming to add an additional time, additional period of time. When do you also have to say the story of Yetziat Mitzrayim? Lehabili Mot Mashiach. Even in the days of Mashiach, when Mashiach comes, and already we will have experienced a 